Everybody, welcome back to another brand new video live from Atlantic City at the National. This is my second day at the National, and I'm going to walk you through. It's actually my last day at the National as well. So got up bright and early, walked into the National once they opened the general public at 10 a.m., and I had some goals in mind today. I was looking, hopefully, to get a big PC card for myself, and also... I was hoping to get a nice box to break for a future Throwback Thursday, something I never opened before. So we'll give you some clips from the National, maybe some stuff we didn't show yesterday. Again, I'm looking at the prices of mantles, and I was a little discouraged yesterday on the prices of the 52 mantles. It just seemed like everything was out of reach. You see, that one right there was NFS, not for sale. It was a really beautiful PSA, too. I asked if you were selling that. What would you sell it for? He said about, I think he said $70,000 uh, because mantles with nice color go for a premium. Here you see a bunch of baseballs that I missed yesterday. This was in the Fanatics booth. They were selling those baseballs for just $20 a piece. Hey, look, our good old friend, the 52 Toss Pack is still there. That pack, last time I asked him, was $4,000. I offered him $2,000 for it, or $2,500. He turned me down. Even though it's a Series 1 pack, no chance at a mantle. And uh, more than likely, no chance of even getting any return on the investment right there. That mantle right there, I think, was $35,000. So even though it was pretty early in the morning, still absolutely packed. 30 rows of tables, just um, cards as far as the eye can see. So there you see a 51 Bowman Mantle rookie card. I started to just take little notes in my notepad about what the prices of these mantles were and where they were located at. You saw Mike Trout, uh, rookie card, red up there. I scratched him off my list once I heard that he was dealing with a back issue that may never get better. At least we'll have to deal with it his entire life. So I was going after a PSA 10 in, of, of him, but I decided to scratch that one off the list. There you see a mantle for 29.5. That's the lowest price I've seen of a graded one so far. However, it's just an authentic. It's not... Uh, possibly trimmed up. So that one was, uh, despite having a nice eye appeal off my list. All right, next up, you see a Pete Rose rookie car. This one, my brother eventually would pick up. Now he's giving it this, the look around here. He's looking at every little aspect of it. He's even smelling the car and you really have to be careful with fakes. You want to feel it. You've got to touch it. You can even smell it there because there are a lot of fakes. Heck, in our auction, I just spotted a, a Jeter 93 Tops fake. And uh, one other thing that you should do, if if you have it available to use, put the card up against another 63 Tops card or whatever the year is, and make sure it's not trimmed. See if you see any little daylight or variation in size. That's the last thing you gotta look out for. My brother did end up buying that card for $1,000, and uh, he talked them down from 1,200. So he got a pretty nice deal on a very nice condition Pete Rose rookie card. Here's the... Uh, Baseball card exchange authenticated boxes. I was looking at. I had my eye on the 1977 box in particular. And then, folks, here it is. And I'll tell you the whole story about how this all went down at the end of the video when I show you the cards. Look at that mantle $50,000. Beautiful color. Just gorgeous. Maybe the best color I've seen, especially of anything in a PSA 1. I can't even believe that's a PSA 1. $50,000. I saw it yesterday. And uh, it's a PSA 1. I'm even looking. There's a tiny crease that you can see over on the left-hand side. Here, I was looking at the back, it's graded exceptional. I have no idea how it got a 1, but uh, I bought it. Here I am walking with the sellers over to the PWCC booth. And uh, there it is. I'm holding it in my hand, a little flash of it right there. don't want to flash it too much around, walking around. But, uh, yep, here it is. I ended up buying it. I'll tell you all about how the transaction went down. It took like 30 minutes. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Please hit that subscribe button. Hit that post notification bell. Now let's go and show you everything I picked up, item by item, from the National. All right, everybody, I'm back from the National. And I've got uh, a quite a decent haul to show you here. This was uh, this was an unforget. I'll probably never have another haul like this one. This was my fourth consecutive national. I've uh, went to Cleveland, the last two in Chicago. Of course, there was a year off there in 2020 because of the pandemic, and now out in Atlantic City. I can tell you, Atlantic City was absolutely massive. There was 30 rows. I don't even know how many tables were there. I would not be surprised if it was thousands. 
Um, so the first day you saw me walk around there, I was kind of just trying to get a feel for what was there. I did buy some stuff and some of the stuff that I picked up the first day you'll see in this stack. The second day, I decided to zero in on the cards that I wanted. And we'll talk a little bit about those in just a second. So let's start with the singles and we'll walk you through these. All right. So first off, there was, there was some, uh, there's some bargain bins there. Actually, there's a lot of bargain bins. There was 50 cent dollar bins. I didn't spend much time on them. I Early when I went there, when I saw, wow, vintage cards for 50 cents or a dollar, I was like, oh, I'm all about that. And I would go through them. But then I realized how quickly I was falling behind in my quest to make it through the entire um, floor on the first day. So I kind of abandoned that strategy after not too long. But I did pick up some bargain bin cards. I think these were maybe a dollar each or 50 cents each. I can't remember. But a 78 Pete Rose is a nice one. Willie McCovey. And I'm always looking for stars that are vintage. Like vintage for me is stuff from the 70s and earlier. I think some people will technically call a card from 1992 vintage because it's 30 years old. But for me, it's stuff from um, the 70s and earlier. There's a Mike Schmidt All-Star from 1980 Tops. I thought this one was pretty cool. It's in decent shape except for a little crease. At the top, you got R Willie McCovey and Ernie Banks, 1969 Tops Leaders card. There's a 1978 Robin Yount card. We've got a 78 Gary Carter. We've got a 78 Dave Winfield, a 78 Steve Carlton. And there is a Tim Raines rookie card from 1981 Tops. You got Joe Morgan, 77 Tops. Speaking of 77, you'll see you'll see a little bit more about 77 Tops in a minute if you don't recognize the box. Got a 79 Thompson Joe Munger right there. Another 1980 Mike Schmidt and then a Reggie Jackson. This one is from 1979. So all of those are pretty cheap. I love that stuff. I would buy these all day. As long as they're not completely destroyed with large creases, I'm going to be buying them. All right, next. I think this may these may have been my first purchase of the National. My brother saw some Justin Verlander rookie cards, and I looked a little close to the case, and I saw this E2 rookie card. It's his Bowman rookie card. It was $20, so I grabbed this one, 2001 Bowman. Didn't have that one, and I thought that was pretty cool. It was Surefire Hall of Famer. And there was also some Aaron Judge rookies there as well, so I grabbed those. Aaron Judge is at 40 home runs right now. I don't see his cards dropping off, at least in the near term, especially if he goes on and challenges the single-season Yankees home run record, which is 61, set by Roger Maris in 1961. Now, the all-time single-season record, 73, set by Barry Bonds. He is unlikely to... to surpass that or have a chance at that but I do believe that Judge could end up hitting 62 to 64 home runs somewhere another way he's going so I hope it keeps going that way and I think that his card ten dollars for his rookie card 2017 Bowman I grabbed both of them that were available a couple cards from a dollar bin right here a Nolan Ryan 1983 tops in great shape and also Willie McCovey 1971 tops had to grab that these I think were in either a five dollar bin or ten dollar bin I, I can't remember but We'll just call them five bucks a piece. There's Hank Aaron, 1975 tops. Then there was a bunch of Juan Sotos, and I've noticed that Soto cards are spiking right now um, just based off of the price of his 2018 Tops Update rookie card in a PSA 10. A few weeks ago, it was an $85 card. I actually bought it for $85 on eBay. Now, it's when I saw it at the National, most people were selling it for $140 to $150. Uh, so it's up. All his cards are up. So I decided to take advantage of maybe somebody throwing these in the bin a couple weeks ago as they were preparing for the national and grabbing some Juan Soto rookie cards. There's a couple more coming up right there that got separated. Next up, we've got Stan Musial and also a Mickey Mantle card. Um, here's the Michael Jordan as well. I think that one was pretty cheap for five bucks. That That's kind of a legendary card with Harry Carey on the card, 1994 upper deck. But um, this one was 30. It was a Mickey Mantle 1961 Topps card. I thought that was pretty cool. The Mick was on my radar all weekend long. And also, there's Stan Musial 1959 Topps for 12 bucks. Uh, no crease on it. It's a little off-center, but I thought that was a decent deal. I, I I used to have a Stan Musial. I still have it somewhere. I used to have a Stan Musial 1962 Topps. I remember that card I used to book for like $200. And it was my best card for a long time. So 59 Topps was pretty cool for just 12 bucks. And then there's the Mickey Mantle right there. Mantle slams two home runs from 1961 Topps. It books at $200. I don't know where they're getting that from. I'm guessing that is going to be a Beckett price. And um, for 30 bucks, it's probably about a $30 to $40 card on eBay in this condition. But still pretty cool. Another card to just toss into the Mano lineup. All right, so next we have the Juan Soto cards, which you've already seen. A couple more of those bad boys. I grabbed all of them that they had. And then we had some nice um slabs there was a lot there was a lot of slabs some people are saying it's the junk slab wax era 
And uh, I did see slab bins for with $3 slabs in them and stuff like that. This was just a bargain bin. It was called Bargain Slabs. Here's a Roger Clemens rookie card for $5. I actually ended up getting this one for free because I think my grand total was like, I can't remember. We'll see it in a second. Here's a Frank Thomas for only $10. That's his rookie card from 1990 score. That one was in a PSA 9. There's another Frank Thomas there as well in a PSA 9. It is the Topps rookie card. That one was 20 bucks. So, yeah, I think it was $35. I said, hey, would you take 30 for these? And uh, he's like, yeah, I'll do that. So, basically got the Clements for free. Pretty cool card right there. And then these two Frank Thomases. Now, I did notice that um, a lot of dealers were not really looking for cutting deals. It just wasn't really, I mean, maybe it was that because I was there on Wednesday and Thursday, which is early on the National. The National runs through Sunday, so... They weren't really having any uh, kinds of negotiations. There was earlier there was a five dollar bin of a bunch of Griffey rookies for a really great deal, and I picked up a stack of them. I was like, "Hey, I'll take all these. Would you knock five dollars off?" And the guy flat out said, "No." He's like, "No, these are priced to sell. I'm not taking anything. I wouldn't take a dollar off." And I was like, "Okay," and I just put them back and walked away because um, you know, I guess just the principle of the thing. All right, next up, we've got a Ronald Acuna Jr. This is a 2018 Tops update. It is a PSA 10. Ronald Acuna Jr. was the number one overall vote getter for the All-Star game for the National League. So the fact that this card is $50 now, it's crazy to me. I, I, I got this one for 50. If you look at recent comps, they're selling for anywhere between 52 and about 75 on eBay. The next cheapest price on this was $75 that I saw anywhere at the National. And, uh, so when I asked the price on this, he had a whole stack of these. I was like, what's the price on your PSA 10? They had to look it up. So you went to a, uh, an app. was trying to look it up. Terrible service. I guess eventually he saw the eBay prices, and uh, I said 50 bucks, and I, I did it. And I, In fact, I, when I originally bought it, it said the complete set variation. I, I, I wanted the regular update, so I, I switched this up after I traded. I was like, hey, wait a second. You mind uh, giving me the update one because I didn't want the uh, the complete set version. I want the uh, the update one. He said, yeah. So 50 bucks for this I thought was a great deal and then here's my other pickups actually i think all that stuff that i just showed you was all from the first day of the national we have two mickey mantle cards they are off condition i did not have either of them so they're just placeholders until i get a nice psa 2 or psa 3 to replace it um so we have first up this one was uh you know it quote unquote books for 600 he wanted 100 for it now it is uh there is an issue there both corners are missing a little bit of a piece so you can see the back a little more in depth right there i don't know if he was trying to cover that other corner up with that price tag but i didn't notice it you can see maybe it was pinned up on a bulletin board but it is a mantle and uh it was pretty uh, you know I, I was all about um mantle this weekend because as you some of you might know i'm i'd like to get a graded psa mantle of uh every one of his cards and uh right now i may have like i don't know, like four or five of them there in a drawer um but nothing super super valuable i think the most expensive mantle that i had up to now was like a maybe like a psa three of the 54 bowman which i think i bought for like 450 uh last year a couple years ago so I just wanted these as kind of placeholders. So a nice uh, clean back there on the 66 tops. The 64 tops is clean except for the top. Now I did offer the guy 200 bucks for these. And he was flat out. I thought he was going to jump over the, the table and attack me. He looked at me like I just like completely insulted him. He was really mad. First of all, he's like, these are priced to sell. And I'm going to sell 30, at least $30,000 of cards this weekend. I... Your $25 doesn't mean anything to me because uh, I offered him um, $200 for $225. I was like, you knocked $25 off. He got nasty with me. And I almost wanted to walk away, but I really wanted these mantles. So I was like, yeah, that's fine. I don't care. I just thought that maybe since those were missing corners, but whatever. And then he like kind of felt bad. He's like, yeah, you know, like I just, you know, just trying to, you know, got to make, got to make money. Costs a lot here to set up. Now, ev eventually my brother found out that it costs three thousand dollars to set up at the national plus airfare and all that stuff. So uh, maybe that's why a lot of uh, dealers that we noticed. I mean, if you were at the national and walked around, let us know in the comments what you saw or thought about the pricing there. Did you think it was inflated? Did you hope to go and finding stuff under eBay prices, but finding a lot of stuff over eBay prices? Well, that's what we found. So that's the little story on those. So a couple mantles right there. Next up. This is a big one for me. It's a 1977 Topps baseball wax box. This will be the oldest 
Tops box that I ever open up. It's for a Throwback Thursday coming up here soon. I don't know the exact date I'm going to do it. Um, maybe in a couple weeks. But you might think, Jabs, what are you doing? Why go back to the baseball card exchange and do another one of their boxes after the abysmal 72 tops break that you had? Or not 72 tops, 72 OPG. So I was talking to the owner of uh, this box, and I will shout him out um, in the video there. His name is uh, Jackpot Sports Cards, and he is... You know, he's, he's an expert on this. He deals in this stuff all the time. You know, the baseball card exchange is a, obviously an expert. They authenticate the boxes. And uh, he's like, yeah. I, I said I said who I was. I said, hey, I'm, I'm planning on opening this on uh, camera. But I have a little bit of an issue with stuff from the 70s. I opened a box before uh, from 1972, and just all the cards are trashed. And he's like, oh, you're, you're jabbed. So, like, we talked. He watched my channel and everything. He's like, I really wish that... Uh, you know, we were in contact before. Apparently, OPG used gum that was very, very low quality, and they used different ingredients. So if the box was subjected to heat at any time, um, the gum just basically melt and bled through all the cards. So he said, any box from 72 to maybe like 80 or something like that, do not buy if it's OPG. You're, you know, it's going to be 50-50 that the, the cards are ruined or whatever because, like you said, if they're subjected to heat, if they went up to, into an attic or sat in a hot car, you're basically done for. So we'll never do OPG ever again, but Tops used higher quality gum in America, so I'm hoping these are okay. Um, we'll have the buy-in for this uh, on Patreon. It's going to be 36 packs, 36 spots. It'll be a fun one. It will be the oldest cards I've ever opened previously, for Tops, that is. Previously, the record was 1978 cello for Tops, but now we're going a little bit earlier here. So we'll see what we can find in this in a couple weeks. But that was, uh, I, ha I had to grab it just because I wanted to get a big a big deal. And this was the, the biggest purchase at the time. And, uh, and then I had a list of three cards that I wanted for the National. There was three cards on that list. Number one, I wanted the 1952 Topps Mickey Mail. That's my holy grail. And my confidence in finding one for a price that I wanted just continued to drop. I've wanted it for the last four nationals I've been to. The first national I was at, they were about 10 grand a piece. The second national, they're about 15 a piece or so in the PSA 1, that is. Last year, they were around 30 to 32 a piece. And this year, they were upwards of 40 to 50 for a PSA 1. And uh, I could just feel it slipping away. It's just, it keeps going up and up, and it feels like I was never going to get it. Um, and um, so I, I turned my sights. I, I basically gave up on the card. Earlier that morning, my brother sent me a message. <clears throat> well, he was like, look, I mean, we were together in the hotel room, but he sent me a text uh, from eBay. He's like, look at this, man. You should just buy it, on, buy it on eBay. Offer these people 40 grand and see if you can get it. It was a really nice mantle, probably one of the nicest mantles I ever saw um, in a PSA 1. And uh, it was forty six dollars or $45,000, and it was from some place called 808 Consignment. And uh, I looked at it, and I was like, yeah, that's that's amazing. forty five grand for that one. I would, I, would, I would definitely offer forty and see what happens. So that was just in the back of my mind. At that point, I gave up on the mantle, and I switched my sights to a 51 mantle. Um, which is the Mantle Rookie card from 1951 Bowman. And I was looking at pricing, and I was so close to making an offer. <clears throat> in fact, I was on my way there to make – I walked all around the National. I also had – the third card on the list was a PSA 10 Mike Trout Rookie card. Um, but after the news about his back condition, a little wary of that. I think the card's going to continue to drop. It drops about $100 a month. It's now down to about seventeen to $1,800 on eBay and a PSA 10 I bet you next year at this time, I might be able to find it for a grant. So I figured I'll just scratch that and uh, just cross that off the list. So I was actually on my way to go and make an offer on a PSA 3 Mantle 51 Bowman. Uh, the guy wanted 19000 for it. It was listed at twenty-one. He said he would take nineteen. That was his lowest. I found a similar card that had recently sold on eBay for, I think, like sixteen. And I was going to offer him seventeen. I was, I was made. It was, I made up my mind. That's, that's what I was going to do. I was going to go for the 51 Bowman rookie and make that offer. And hope he accepted it. Now on the way over there, I was walking past some, and a booth caught my eye, and it was 808 Collectibles. 808 Collectibles was the same 
seller that earlier in the day I saw the Mickey Mantle rookie card. They possessed that one. So I went over to the booth and I was like, hey, uh, I actually had a screenshot of it from earlier. I was like, hey, I was looking earlier. I just, I've been watching some Mantles and I, I saw that you had a 52 Mantle and a PSA 1 for 45. And they're like, yep, we just sold it. And I was like, oh. and literally the guy that bought it was standing right there and he was behind the booth. He's like, sorry, bro. It's mine now. And he pulled it out of his backpack and there it was the 52 mantle. He's like, yep, it was right there. $50,000 price tag on it. I was like, oh man, that I just missed it. That really stinks. He's like, what, what were you going to pay for it? He's like, I might, I might be interested in selling it. And I was like, I was going to offer 40. And he said, done. Just like that. Done. Just so, so quick. So that like, uh, <laughs> that stopped me in my tracks. And uh, I ended up buying it for $40,000. So I'll tell you a little more about the story. Let's bring the card in. This is the Holy Grail. I got it. It's the 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle. This is the nicest PSA one that I've ever seen. All the other ones at the National did not compare to this one. The centering was always terrible on them. They were scuffed. All the ones that I saw were scuffed, and they were like 38 grand, 40 grand, missing paper, paper loss, just terrible. This one, however, just has such great eye appeal. The centering is, this was one of the best centerings that I've seen. It's about 40, 60, I would say, or so. Uh, it's uh, got a PSA uh, 1 poor fare. This was in the PWCC vault, and they consider it to be one of the most. Look, my I'm sweating a little bit here. You can see some. Uh, <laughs> you can see a little bit of condensation on the card. It got a, the exceptional rating from PWCC. Here's the back of the card. Just um, an amazing card. So some of you might be wondering why it's a one. There is a crease on it, and I'm so thankful that the crease does not really show unless you're up close. I'm so shocked that this did not get it too, but uh, the crease, if we get the light just right, you can see the crease right there. It goes up the card right there, and uh, also there's a little tiny crease there. But, I mean, in most light, you can't even see that crease. So I have the Mantle 52 uh, tops now in my collection. Now, this took some work to get, folks. I had to really go all out to get this one. It took about at least 30 minutes of negotiation to get it in terms of getting him paid. The $40 was settled upon, but he did not want to take PayPal at all because he'd recently just lost his PayPal because somebody sent him a friends and family payment and PayPal shut his uh, payment down. So... Um, I was trying to download Zelle. I got Zelle and then I had a limit of $1,000 that I could send in Zelle. I guess new signups, you can only send so much. So that backfired. And in the meantime, there's terrible service there. So it took forever to even get signed up for Zelle and everything. So eventually he agreed to PayPal if I covered the PayPal fees, which I did. So altogether, I paid $41,600 for this one. Forty-one six out the door and now it's mine. A Mickey Mantle. Uh, PSA one, and I um I still can't believe it, folks. This is this is the holy grail for me. I've been talking about this card ever since I opened up this channel back in man 2016. I started doing cards, and maybe a year or two after that. And people will always ask me every now and then, "What's the card that you want more than anything?" And I've always said it's the 52 mantle. And now here it is. So now. <laughs> I just have to, uh, I got to get a safety deposit box for this one and store it away. And then I am looking forward to passing this down to my kids and this um, just being a, a family heirloom. Um, the Mickey Mantle 1952 Tops. Just an amazing card. This card is going to fetch headlines. The 9.5 SGC is likely to sell for upwards of $10 million. That was another reason I pulled the trigger. I got very nervous that that card was going to, uh, that card selling for 10 million was going to pull all of these prices up on every other grade of mantle. I saw it happen with the, with the mantle nine sold for 5.9 or whatever. It seemed like it pulled everything up. It brought everything up with it. So I figured this might be my last chance to find this card at a price that I can, uh, you know, just barely afford there. So there it is the Mickey mantle 52 tops folks. There you have it. Finally, at long last, it is uh it's the the centerpiece the pillar of my collection
and um, I'm just uh, very, very happy to finally have it. All right, folks. So that's the story of the National. That's my pickups. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you guys liked this video. Hit that thumbs up button for me. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Uh, we do videos every single day. We're having an August giveaway where we're going to be giving away this bat down Ronald Acuna Jr. All you have to do is be subscribed with your post notifications on. So if you haven't checked the bell next to the subscribe button, tap that and click all um, so that you get notified every time we post a new video. Also, keep in mind, we have that 77 Tops wax box break coming up soon. So thank you very, very much for watching, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, and... Uh, I will see you tomorrow. We'll have a third and final national video for you tomorrow. I bought a bunch of mystery packs at the national, just one from each booth. And when I saw them, we're going to open those up and see if they're any good. And then mystery box Monday coming up this Monday. Um, we have a brand new retail location where we found cards out on Tuesday. So videos every single day, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate you guys watching. Have a great rest of your Saturday and I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night, everybody.